My guest today is Riti Chikaru, a founder of Our Children Matter Most, uh, which is a new nonprofit. Uh, Riti is working to reform how protective orders are uh, given in Texas. So Riti, let's start by learning about your personal story. It's with great apprehension and under the the threat mm -hmm. of an unconstitutional gag order mm -hmm. that I am, you know, revealing these this information um, to you and to your to your uh, uh, newspaper. I was uh, a mom. I was a successful oil and gas entrepreneur. I was the only woman and minority owned petroleum distributor in the state of Texas, and I was uh, I had a you know decent family, you know, family environment. Uh, but for whatever reasons, um, my husband and I got uh, divorced in 2015. And after that, uh, one year, we um, uh, co-parented very cooperatively and successfully. Mm -hmm. But then a third, an interfering third party from my husband's household uh, came into the picture and this person came in with certain amount of influence and certain amount of advantages in the family court. And I was served with absolutely no basis. I was served with a temporary ex parte restraining order on Christmas Day and told my children were not going to be, you know, with me for Christmas. I was accused of child abuse and neglect as per Texas Family Code. My story is not so unique um, because this is how family courts, a few unethical officials in family court, uh, begin the process against uh, unsuspecting mothers and fathers uh, by starting off with two weapons, either an ex parte temporary restraining order where you're, you, know, you don't have enough time to uh, prepare or defend yourself, and right at the outset, you are in the defensive position. And the second one is an unconstitutional protective order or a no contact order. Mm -hmm. So first was a temporary ex parte restraining order. And when that couldn't be proved that I committed any child abuse and neglect, literally before jury trial, one year into jury trial, my ex-husband, his household, um, two attorneys, uh, join forces and completely with false allegations, groundless, ridiculous, mm -hmm. laughable allegations, obtained a 17-year protective order mm -hmm. against me. My children were not named as protected per uh, persons in a protective order. Um, I did not you know, cause any harm. I did not cause any bodily injury. I did not threaten to cause any bod bodily injury or harm. None of those um, Texas Penal Code or Texas Family Code requirements or grounds or basis for uh, issuing a protective order were met. However, here we are, 17-year protective order, and it's been two and a half years since I have actually seen my two older sons in person, and it's been a few months since I've seen my youngest son in person. That's where we're at. And I'm, I'm fighting it, not just for myself, but for several mothers and fathers. So let's talk about um, the nonprofit that you started and the three pillars that you're using to uh, reform um, and possibly find these orders to be unconstitutional. Yes. Um, the nonprofit um, that we've started is uh, called Our Children Matter Most, OCMM as an abbreviation. And we're very grateful to have the support of an organization like NAACP, the National Association of Advancement for Colored People, the Austin chapter, who have taken keen interest in, in, in the um, issues that we're trying to address. Mm -hmm. And we're not trying to say, hey, we're coming here and we're gonna make a mass change. The family court system is dysfunctional. It is dysfunctional for mothers and fathers, but is functioning perfectly for the court officials. You know, it's the, the protective orders is not just a statewide issue, it's a national issue. Well, let's plug your upcoming events. You're gonna start doing these uh, shanty walk? Yes, shanti means peace. Mm -hmm. And um, I got this idea actually from my son who had been reading about Martin Luther King and uh, my middle son. Uh, Martin Luther King and uh, Mahatma Gandhi about how they did these peace walks and these civil disobedience movements and nonviolent direct action steps. The reason why I think these walks are effective, mm -hmm. uh, Shanti walks, is A, it's a peaceful walk, uh, and, and B, it, it is transformational 
for me, for someone who had been going through extreme PTSD and trauma, just to be able to get out and walk in nature, it is a healing experience. And to connect with other parents and say, you know, you're going through the similar, if not the same things, let's walk together. And there's something about this kind mm. of community exercise is when we walk together and we socialize together and we also have a Shanti chant. Uh, so when we chant together, then not only does it bring visibility mm -hmm. to our legislators and our lawmakers as, the, as this you know, grassroots movement grows, but it also is extremely, um, it helps transmute the pain that we parents feel from having been separated from our children into relief, if not joy, into at least relief mm. that, okay, I'm not alone. Last point, if, if parents have had a personal experience with uh, illegal uh, protective orders, yeah. um, where can they reach out to you? To, I know you want to connect with some of these parents across the state. Uh, if they've had similar stories absolutely mm -hmm. we and and you if you feel cons i want i want to tell parents is if you feel concerned about um you know gag orders and if you're threatened anyway we don't have to use your full name mm -hmm. uh, for for what we do um you can just use your first name we can protect your identity mm -hmm. we can even use aliases because there will be a mass action uh, mass legal action sure. that is coming yeah. with NAACP involved. I, I mean, it's just a given that if there's certain things are not handled in the appropriate manner and an appropriate time for civil rights violations, there will be mass legal actions. Yeah. And in order to do that, we need to start gathering, um, you know, sure. uh, our parents, you can, uh, the parents can email me, parents, mm -hmm. you know, grandparents, whoever, guardians, whoever is in, is subject to an unconstitutional protective order, can email our organization at info at ourchildrenmattermost.org. Um, or you can call 512-662, you know, the phone number that I have, which is also on the website. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, and reach us out on our social media. You know, we're very responsive. We're cool. very responsive. Um, so if, if folks care about this topic, uh, you know, I would encourage you to um, reach out to this organization, um, like any nonprofit, uh, they need donations, um, share your story if you have a similar story, because there's a lot that's coming up, up on the horizon, isn't there, Riti? Yes. There's a lot that's going to happen on several different levels. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. And I can tell you, parents, including me, we are sick and tired. We are sick and tired of being marginalized. Uh, our our civil rights and our children's civil rights being violated, and we are we cannot go on. Mm -hmm. Life that cannot go on. So, for the ones that are frozen, it's okay. There are, there are a lot of other parents who are willing to fight, who are willing to be at the forefront, who are willing to speak up. Uh, they will take leadership leadership positions. But for those people who just want to even at least share your story and not feel alone, we are here for you all. Preeti, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we look forward to learning more about you and our cover story in the next week or two. And uh, best of luck with everything uh, you're doing. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time.